going to take a look now at what is called a permutation. And a permutation is simply the number of ways that we can arrange different objects where the order is important. Let me give you an example. Say I had the letters A, B, and C. And I wanted to list all of the permutations of the letters A, B, and C. So in other words, how many different ways can I mix up or arrange those three letters? Well, obviously one way is just the way that it was given, A, B, and C. But I could take the B and the C and I could switch their order around. There's another permutation of those three letters. Or instead, instead of starting with A, I could start with B. Perhaps write B, A, and C. Or B, C, and A. Or start with C, write A and B. And I think there we've written all of the permutations, or the total number of ways that you could mix up those three letters. So the number of permutations of the letters A, B, and C are six. Well, again, you know, we don't want to have to be listing all of these, all of these different outcomes here for the permut to figure out the number of permutations of A, B, and C. So we can, we can use actually the fundamental counting principle here. Um, if we consider we've got three letters, A, B, and C. So how many choices do we have to select a letter to start with? Well, we have three letters, so we would have three choices here for the first, uh, first letter. Once we've selected that letter, let's just say it was an A, we would now have two letters of which to choose from, um, from the next two. And then once we've chosen two of the letters, it only leaves one letter left. So again, you can see, if we then multiply three times two times one, we get the number six. Let's say that we've got four letters. I wrote down the word math here, and I want to figure out the number of permutations, or how many ways can I rearrange those four letters. Well, I need to pick, I need to pick one letter here for my first, my first letter, and it looks like I've got four of them to choose from. My next uh, letter, I will have three choices because I've already selected one of them. I would then only have two choices for my third and my final one. I wouldn't actually have a choice because I've already selected three of the four. So the total number of permutations, or in other way, words, the number of ways of mixing all those letters up would be four times three, 12, 12 times two, 24, 24 times one, 24. So you can see you wouldn't want to have to list all 24 outcomes um, for these four letters. Notice when we've been doing these last two, when we work with permutations, the numbers seem to go in descending order. So we start with four times three times two times one. And I think if we added a five letter word, like say music, then you would expect this to be the number of ways that we could arrange those five letters. Five choices, then four, then three, then two, then one. So 20, 60, 120. So 120 different permutations of the word music. So this pattern here, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, multiplying by these descending um, natural numbers has a special connotation or a special notation rather in in mathematics. And it's called factorial. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is denoted by this symbol here in mathematics. It looks like the exclamation mark that you would see in English. 
And it doesn't mean that this is a very excited 5, like 5. It means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. You will find this button on your, on your calculator. Um, so make sure you know how to, how to use that because we will be using that, that button quite a bit. Um, a number such as 4 factorial, the calculator will do all of this multiplying for you and come up with the answer 24. So it's a, it's a nice shortcut way of entering it into the calculator to figure out what uh, all these multiplications are for these uh, natural numbers that are less than 4, and in this case here, less than 5. Let's consider this word family, and instead of me choosing all six letters and figuring out a permutation of all six letters of the word family, what if I only wanted to find the number of permutations if I chose two of these letters? So for instance, here's some examples, I'm not going to list them all, but FA would be one, or FM, I could go FI. Remember, order is important, so also IF is something totally different than FI. So there would, be, there would be several of these. Well, we could still use sort of our fundamental counting principle here and say, well, how many different choices do I have? I have six. I have six different choices for my first one. And then I've chosen one, so I now have five different choices for my second. And since six times five is 30, there would be 30 two-letter permutations of the word family. So 30 ways of selecting two of these letters um, where order is important. We donate this, we denote this rather, uh, by this notation. 6 P 2. What this means is I want to find out the number of permutations if I have six different objects, and I need to select two of those six. So 6P2, this answer is 30. And what it really means, is it means it's like the first two parts of the 6 factorial. So we started like the 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but we only did the first two parts of it, 6 times 5, and we didn't multiply by the rest because we were only choosing two. We also have a formula that says this. You will see this formula on your formula sheet. And it says NPR would equal N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. And I'll show you how that formula works. A permutation is the number of ways of arranging a set of objects. If there are n objects and you want to know the number of different ways of arranging r of them, then npr will equal n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So I've written the formula down here again. npr is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And over on the side here, we've already determined that 6p2 is equal to 30. So in other words, if we had to, to find out what 6p2 is using the formula, it would equal 6 factorial, n factorial, 6 factorial, divided by n minus r, so we subtract these two numbers, 6 minus 2, which is 4 factorial. You will see that 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And all of these factors will cancel out with all of these factors. And what are we left with? The first two parts, the first two parts of the 6 factorial, 6 times 5. So this is the formula, and I'll show you why that formula is important. You may get a question that looks like this. NP2 is equal to 12. In other words, 
we, are, we have no idea how many things we're choosing from, but when we choose two of those things, there are 12 different permutations. Okay. But if we use our formula, NPR is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So N factorial divided by N minus 2 factorial is equal to 12. Then what we would get is n factorial. Now remember factorial means we continue to multiply by one less each time. So if I'm starting with n, I would multiply that by n minus 1, and then I'd multiply that by n minus 2, and then I'd multiply that by n minus 3, and so on and so on and so on. And then n minus 2 factorial, I would start with n minus 2, and then I'd multiply that by one less, which is n minus 3, n minus 4, and so on, and know that equals 12. Well, looks like that's going to cancel, looks like that's going to cancel, this would cancel, and these would continue to cancel as we move to the right. So, this expression, n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, simplifies to n times n minus 1 equals 12. And this just ends up being a quadratic when we multiply this in. You get n squared minus n equals 12. Or n squared minus n minus 12 equals 0. And you see this is just a quadratic, which we can factor. Two numbers that multiply to minus 12 and add to minus 1 are negative 4 and positive 3. And we would get n equals 4 or n equals minus 3. Now minus 3 makes no sense in our application. We can't select two objects out of negative 3 items. So we need to, we need to reject that solution. But n equals 4 makes sense. 4p2 indeed does equal 12. Here's a couple of examples. <clears throat> With the first one here, it says there are eight different books. How many ways can we arrange four of them on a shelf? Okay, so looks like again a permutation. So the solution would be eight. And I want to know the number of different permutations there are of those eight things when I choose four. So eight choose four of these things. And in your calculator, you will have a, a permutation button. So I can enter 8P4. Again, make sure that you know on your calculator how to find the permutation bu button. Otherwise, you would go 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. And that gives you 1,680. Wow. So, so with just eight different books, if I just choose four of them, there's 1,680 ways to arrange those different books on the shelf. And another similar question, how many ways could I select a president, vice president, and a secretary from a group of 15 people? So 15 people, and I want to know how many ways can I select three where once I select these three things, they're different. A president is different than a vice president, which is different than a secretary. So this is permutation. Entering in 15P3, or if you like, 15 times 14 times 13. 2,730 different ways of selecting a president, vice president, secretary from just 15 people. So far, the words we've been looking at, and the permutations we've dealt with, has had everything different. So the words, when we look at music, music had all the letters different. But what if we had a word like happy, where the two P's are the same? So in other words, if I took this P and then selected that Y, say I was going to, going to, to uh, just select two, Choosing this P and this Y is no different than choosing this P and this Y. 
they're the same same outcome. So we've got some things that are that are going to double up here. Well, the formula, as you might imagine, if we had five different letters here, would be five factorial, assuming that they were all different. But since we have two p's that are the same, we're going to divide by two factorial. So if we've got a word that has five letters in it, five factorial, but then we need to take a look at the, at the word and see, does it have any letters that are the same? If so, then we divide by the number of things that are alike, in this case two. Let's look at some other examples. We consider the word parallel. You see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number of permutations of the word parallel would be eight factorial, except that I've got two a's, so I need to divide by two factorial, and I've got three l's, so I need to divide by three factorial, because moving these l's around is not going to make any difference. So, eight factorial divided by bracket, two factorial times three factorial, close the bracket, is 3,360. There are 3,360 ways, or 60 permutations, of the word parallel.